Realism is what Microsoft Flight Simulator or any other simulation game is intended for. At the end of the day, it's still a game. But whether you play it casually or seriously, you will want to play it as close to the real thing as possible. Today we are going over the methods and starting up the Cessna 152, otherwise known as the Aerobad. This particular aircraft is quite meaningful to me since I flew more than 100 hours on it in real life as a student pilot a few years ago. We'll be going through all the procedures as provided by real world checklists from cold and dark to ready for taxiing. This will be the first of a series of flight simulator content that I'll be creating, so stay tuned and subscribe. If you are really new to Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can start your aircraft by simply pressing Ctrl E. That's all there is to it. Your aircraft comes to life and the prop spins. Add some throttle and you're good to go. In reality, there's a lot more to it. Let me show it to you real quick. Parking brake set. Flight controls free and correct. Fuel shutoff valve on. Mixture rich. Carb heat off. Master switch on. Nav lights and beacon lights on. Throttle open one quarter inch. Engine prime as required. Prop area clear. Ignition start. Throttle set for 1000 RPM. Oil pressure check. Ammeter charging. Radio frequencies set. Transponder set to standby. Trim set for takeoff. Now it may seem daunting at first, but let me guide you through all of that slowly. Pilots are not supposed to be in a hurry. They follow a bunch of checklists just like this one to get things done from pre-flight all the way to securing the aircraft after landing. These checklists also include certain emergency procedures for instances like engine failure after takeoff or electrical fire during flight. In this demonstration, we will be following a checklist that I use during my flying days and go over many of the items in detail. By the way, I'm using a flight stick with a throttle quadrant. If you have one, that's perfect. If you don't have one, you can just use your keyboard and mouse. However, your flight sim experience will drastically improve if you use a controller. In flying, checklists, just like this one, are immaculate. My instructor once told me that no matter how seasoned of a pilot you are, even if you already memorize the checklist by heart, you should still use the checklist because mistakes can happen and they will happen. And when they happen, lives will be at risk. Now, I'm not a licensed flight instructor myself, so everything that I'm covering here will be for flight sim applications only. There are many technicalities that I will be avoiding in order to preserve the fun of what we're about to perform. Alright, the first few items on the checklist are essential in real life. But here in Flight Sim, they don't really make sense, so we're just going to skip them for now. As soon as you get into the cockpit, the first thing you have to check is the parking brake. Just like hopping into your car, you have to see if the handbrake is on, right? And then you have to check if your flight controls are free and correct. You'll never know if the cable snapped overnight or some bird might have built its nest inside your ailerons. Although these situations are not simulated here, in reality, they can happen. Although very rarely, but they can. Next, you need to turn the fuel shutoff valve to on. Airplanes have fuel shutoff valves for two reasons. One is to have a way to cut fuel supply to the engine in the event of fire. And the other is to prevent leakages when the aircraft is parked. You have to understand that fuel is stored inside the wings, so gravity might play a role in leaking fuel. We don't want that to happen. Next is the mixture lever pushed all the way forward to rich. This is an interesting piece of control which is found in all piston-driven aircraft. 
What it does is it adjusts the fuel air mixture needed by your engine to function properly. As you fly higher and higher, air gets thinner and thinner, so your aircraft will be gasping for air just to burn fuel. Without mixture control, your engine will start cuffing and even die in flight. We don't want that to happen. The mixture lever allows you to alter the mixture of fuel and air so that your engine can happily keep on running. When you start your airplane, the mixture lever should be pushed all the way forward and incrementally pulled backwards until you obtain the correct engine performance. Next, we go down here to turn on the master switch, the nav lights, and the beacon light. The master switch brings to life all the electrical components of your aircraft, including the radios. Once you've turned that on, you should also turn the nav lights and beacon light on for safety reasons. People and other aircraft should be notified to stay away since your aircraft is now active and is about to start anytime soon. We don't want accidents. Lights can save lives. In real life, this is the part where I listen to 80s and start using the radio to contact ground control or the tower for clearance and taxi instructions. But for this demonstration, let's just skip that part. I will, however, be covering that in the future, so stay tuned. Next on the checklist is the throttle lever to be pushed about one quarter inch to give a little fuel to your engine. And then you're gonna have to prime the engine. This is not always required, but if it is the first time today that your aircraft has started, then you should prime it. Normally I'd prime it twice, three times the most, or until it gets really hard to push. Now you are ready to start your engine. Look outside and see if the prop area is clear. You don't want to see something or someone near your propeller at this point. Remember, safety first. In the airport where I flew, we are required to shout CLEAR PROP no more than 5 seconds before starting our engines. To start, turn the ignition key all the way to the right and hold it until your aircraft builds power. Once you let go of it, it should turn itself by default back to both. Glance over to your tachometer on the right and set your throttle for 1000 RPMs. This has to stay in 1000 RPMs every time you're not going anywhere. Also, look at your oil gauges to see if both are pointing at the greens and not on the reds. Oil is the lifeblood of your engine. Oil gauges in greens, check. Finally, go all the way to the right and confirm if your ammeter is charging. If all seems well, you may now start using your radio and set your transponder to standby with the correct squawk code. In this case, it's 1200. Again, I will be covering these in future episodes. Finally, go down and set your trims for takeoff. If you push your throttle a little bit for at least 1100 RPMs, your aircraft will move forward as soon as you release your brakes. Congratulations! You are now ready to fly. On the next video, we will be going over the next items on our checklists, namely engine run-up, before takeoff, normal takeoff, and cruise. I hope you enjoyed watching this, but more importantly, I hope that I've answered any question you might have. This has been Marty, and I'll be seeing you tomorrow.